Hi guys, welcome to the Off Balance podcast. We're uh, joined uh, in studio uh, on Skype, obviously. So that's our new studio uh, with Brianna St. Mary. How are you doing, Brianna? Uh, not bad. Sticking in there. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, we had her on the podcast. Actually, Tazo had her on the podcast with Val uh, last time in real life. Uh, uh, but uh, Brianna is a world champion now in, no- in Nogi. Uh, purple belt world champion from last year and uh, Pan Am world champion too, I believe. Uh, champion, obviously. Um, yeah, blue belt Pan Ams and, and Nogi at purple belt. Brianna, yeah, has exactly. Run, uh, just to uh, not have any false uh, false claims on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive. Uh, so though. You've racked up all these credentials since uh, since last time we talked. I mean, if you keep going that way, uh, good things to come. Yeah, it's uh, it's too bad. I felt like I had a, a bit of a. I was planning on doing kind of going for the Grand Slam there. I was doing the Pans, the Brazilian uh, Nationals, and then the Worlds. But uh, it is what it is, and in the end, I'm in better circumstances than a lot of people. So for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, at least so, you're signing you're signing out on a on a somewhat of a good note, right? Like you have some. Yeah, well, actually, that's what uh, one of my friends was telling me who trains in Toronto, and she's like, "Oh, you know, uh, she was trying to hook me up with a job, and uh, she's telling me tell them that you're." You know, you were going to win the Pans and the Worlds this year, but then they canceled it. I was like, oh, it's true. I could just go and tell everyone that. You know, I never actually had to do it. And oh, I was going to win them, but then they canceled them. So, and, and retire off that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's like a win in the book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can count it as a <laughs> win. <done. laughs> so, so, you were training, like, uh, preparing for for the Gi uh, Pans, basically, right? Before the uh, yeah. whole shit yeah. went down. Yeah. So, actually, it was, it was pretty funny because... Me and Morella, for the longest time, we finished Europeans and we had, we had our hearts set on Pan Ams, but then we weren't sure if we were going to be able to scrape together the funds. So we had done like even like a, a whole fundraiser to like do it. We'd sold baked goods at like a tournament like a few weeks before Pans. And I like signed up for the Pans like maybe like a day before they canceled it when registration ended. So I was like super psyched. I was like, man, I got the money together. Like it's on. Let's go. It's like it's a sign that I have to go because we managed to like get the money and then they canceled them. <laughs> Profit but, hustle. Uh, yeah, Which that's... was it? You sold the you sold big goods. You said. Yeah. So me and Morella, um, one of my teammates over at BTT. Um, well, I think you guys might know her. Oh, yeah, I know, we I know, know her. Yeah. Do. Um, but uh, yes, we had started like we called ourselves like the tap out bakers, and we had sold some like healthy and not so healthy snacks um, at uh, the Mastermind Cup, which happened on I think March seventh, mm-hmm. and that was yeah. to get us the money to be able to book our flights to Pan Am's, um, which we managed to do. Uh, and then and then it got canceled. <laughs> Can I test the quality uh, of the product? I think I, I, this added uh, like uh, three to five pounds to my weight. Actually, <laughs> it was excellent. Uh, uh, everything was very very tasty. Nice. So, so we product. have a witness okay. right here. Yeah. <laughs> Not only we have a witness, but we have a new business idea. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's exactly. gonna be up and running once this uh, COVID thing is over. You should start baking from the home. From home. That's it. Just do that. Done. Yeah, I just feel bad like hustling people for like, I know in the end I'm giving them a product, but I felt bad like kind of like starting up being like, I know everyone's kind of like short on funds these days and like some people aren't working and then being like, oh, come buy my stuff, you know, when I don't like necessarily need to. I don't know. Just You never know. That extra yeah, stuff can come in handy. Yeah, it's true. It does. The extra calories. Survival and it yeah. seems like all I have is time to bake right now, so. Exactly. So, uh, Brianna, did, did you guys get refund for the flight? How, how, how did that work? Man, I could actually talk a lot about that because my mom works for Air Canada and she oh, has yeah. been like slammed. She's been working till like 2 a.m. on some nights because like people are calling in. It's, it's actually like I feel horrible for it because people are calling in. And in the end, if you like if something extraordinary happens, you should have bought travel insurance. And then Air Canada is like offering to like credit people for their flights um so basically give your money to and they they're giving two years now for you to spend it on anything which is like actually legally they don't have to do they don't even have to do that but people are calling people like my mom and just like saying that they're like stealing their money and that they're monsters and my mom's just been dealing that with like 12 hours a day so is the credit uh is the credit or you can uh kind of rebook your flight for a later date i think that was the case for us because uh, we had to choose another flight and we chose the one for uh, Las Vegas, yeah. And uh, uh, I'm now now I'm not certain it's gonna happen. And I think you can only do this once, right? Um, so you should be able to, because at least the policy right now. I know the policy has been changing like every week, though, mm-hmm. considering circumstances. But um, for Air Canada, you should be able to actually also get a credit. And if you don't want to rebook right away, 
you can like wait to see since now it's like all up in the air. Okay. So yeah, PSA out there, you can you can get like at least a credit for your flight, which is like pretty decent. And then refunds in certain cases, but just not all of them. But uh, anyways, and it's just it's shitty because in the end, like a lot of people on my mom's team, like more than half of them actually lost their jobs. And then people yeah. are calling my mom saying that she's like a monster stealing their money when like all her coworkers are like losing their jobs and like have no work. So just have yeah, a little, my sister, uh, my, my sister, you. yeah, she works for Air Canada. Well, she was working, but she got laid off too. So um, I, a lot of people have been have been losing their job off of it. Yeah. So it's I think it's just a mess for absolutely everybody right now. I, it's just like people that are saying that are maybe a bit selfish in in the end because they don't realize that it's just like. It's yeah, just so. getting out of hand for everybody. Yeah. yeah the exactly. frontline yeah, workers who are picking up the phone, they're not making policies, you know, and they, they yeah. don't no, have exactly. that much wiggle room to negotiate and, or help people out. Yeah. I yeah. think the fact that some people are behind the phone or behind the screen makes them feel uh, pretty confident about th saying things like that. Like a million yeah. percent. It was like, like you're in your car. Like people honk in their cars. I'm like, you would have never said shit to me on the sidewalk. Like you would have put your head down and kept walking, but in the car, like, <laughs> Actually, in your case, people would probably say something. Nobody would ever guess that you can choke their asses out in a couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. I think for you, you're you're kind of gonna get uh, roasted until you can prove them wrong. But yeah, no, I find that sucks. I'm I'm sorry to hear that your mom has to go through that. Yeah, it's like uh, key keyboard warriors we call them, right? Like they're yeah. behind the screen and they just talk shit. But they don't know. Those um, leave comments on YouTube. I like yeah, that right? keyboard warriors. That's a good one. Yeah, keyboard warriors. <laughs> the best kind of warriors. warriors. Easy to, to get the black belt in uh, in this sports. Oh yeah, yeah. You all you gotta do is make an account. You make an account. That's it. You yeah. sign up and you, they get your. They ship your uh, your black belt in, uh, Circle jerk and you and you'll get it right away. A couple of oh black belt warriors right here. <laughs> That's um, so we were saying like right right before we're uh, starting to record, uh, we're talking about training. So um, can you? Maybe like, because I feel like everybody's doing a bit, uh, some stuff differently. So uh, how has it been for you since the beginning of this? Like, uh, maybe if you can walk us through, like, uh, when, when you started, like, basically stopped training and had to figure it out at home, right? Yeah, well, I, I've actually been, like, pretty lucky considering, like, my circumstances with my dad. So like I said, my dad um, is a black belt. Um, so I've been able to film, uh, two times a week, we film an online course for, um, some BTC people. Um, oh, and then also, you know, I can like drill with him and do whatnot, but then more than that, my dad's actually a personal trainer too. So like, we just have like, like I have like at least a dozen kettlebells. I have like, a I have a, an Olympic uh, weightlifting bar. I have, I have just access to like a lot of, um, training equipment, which I feel like very fortunate for. So like as much as I've been able to like keep, so I'm doing like a uh, waitress training, like probably like five times a week. And then I go do uh, hill workouts at, um, there's a park near my house, uh, Centennial. Um, so I've been doing some hill workouts there, but then that being said, I'm also like really fortunate that I'm like near, I live near a park. I have uh, access to all this like training equipment. So I'm not going to call anyone out and be like, Oh, you should be training more and whatever. I think there's like a way for everyone, but in the end, I'm, I'm also happy that my circumstances are as such for our situation i saw you doing farmer farmer walks in the park and your dad was doing like i don't remember i saw a video it, was, it looked pretty sick it was a nice day you guys had it all laid out in the garden it looked pretty sick yeah my, my dad's big into heavy carries and i'm actually getting him to them too they're really fun because it i you know what i started doing is i started bringing like the kettlebells out and i do stuff like sometimes i just do like the classic farmer carry sometimes i do overhead carries and i actually just like i just say i'm gonna go take a walk and and each day like i try to go around my block but like it's actually like it just tears at your shoulders. So like each day yeah, I, I yeah. see something on the road, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it to that fire hydrant today. Today I'm going to make it to that car parked on the street. Yeah, it's actually kind of That's, fun. That's so funny. But you know what? The farmer's walk, if you do it on one side, it's a little bit yeah. harder. Really? Okay, I'm going to try that out. Then. Because you got you to gotta work on like that stabilization because when you carry two weights, it kind of like helps you balance. It's true. It grounds like you. Yeah. On each side. That's why like the single leg deadlift with weights, it looks a lot harder than it actually is because with two weights, it's kind of helping you balance, right? So actually, I, well, I do the single leg deadlift with one weight, but I will say that in physio, um, my osteo first showed it to me without weight. I actually had like a, a wooden stick lined up on my hips and I just had to keep the stick as flat as possible going down. And I had so much trouble. And then I started doing it with just one kettlebell. And I was doing it so much better. But it's, it's literally just to have that weight to, like, ground you. So it, it helps, like, yeah. It looks harder, but it's actually easier. It definitely is. It definitely is. I mean, single leg deadlifts, such such an important exercise. I mean, whether you're doing it for 
for strength training, whether you're doing it as a warm up. Today we did it as a warm up just to gain yeah. that extra range of motion when you're starting to drill, roll, regard, all these things. I, I think uh, it was good, um, good kind of warm up. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, just actually, yeah. all the exercises I did during physio for my knee, and I'm, I'm sure you could uh, say the same. I, I still do now as part of my weight training regimen or like at the warm up or like whatnot. All the time. Did you- did you All get surgery time. on your knee? No, I, I actually avoided the surgery. I was happy. Um, so I ended up being out for, I think, almost four months of like uh, physio. I was going three, four times a week, but I didn't have to get the surgery in the end. I'm at the same stage as you, but for my shoulder right now. Uh, are your AC joint? No, my rotator cuff. Uh, yeah, just just from doing – and you know what? What's the, what's the craziest part about it is – it's from doing too much overhead stuff. It's from um, not having like those straps. Not active, balancing it out. Keeping you, keeping you, uh, keeping your shoulders back. So what happens yeah. when you round it forward and you go to lift, there's that impingement, right? Yeah. So what that does over time, you're like pinching a tendon and it starts to rip. So I'm, I'm laying off anything that's overhead this weekend. I'm doing jits and like yeah. just before I start rolling, I have these exercises that I do and it honestly decreases the pain by, I'm not exaggerating, 75% before you train. I'm not exaggerating. Well, I think something that like jujitsu people in general should like do. And like my, since my daddy's a trainer, like he just like always emphasizes like in jujitsu, like all we're doing is like we're pulling and we're crunching in, you know? Yeah. So then if you're going to go do weights that involve like that exact same motion, like there's just going to be such a huge imbalance in your body. So like if you go into the weights, you should be doing the opposite of what you're doing in the jujitsu gym. Cause then you're, you're getting those muscles worked when you roll. So like yeah. there's no point like overemphasizing them in the gym and then that's mm-hmm. how injuries occur so you have to go into the gym and be like okay like i have to do things that like extend my body that like he yeah. even told me to just start doing like because my finger is actually in the morning i can't even like when it was when i was training full-time i couldn't even close a fist like oh I would my, God, yeah. my, hand with my hand yeah i'm sure val knows <laughs> yeah. I, would close yeah. a fist, I would try to like squeeze something and i couldn't i was like that's so scary i'm, I'm 23 years old like, what's going on so uh, my dad's that's that's like, doing finger extensions you know yeah yeah i feel the same a bit i feel like when it, my hands are always a bit close like this just from from yeah, ripping claw, so much you know, you know? They're always like claws exactly it's so weird but you know i've been trying to like uh do a bit of like stuff on, on on the hand on the forearm and release a lot of the forearm and um you were talking about like doing exercises that like basically counter counteract what we're doing in jiu-jitsu one of the uh the thing that's been helping me so much i'm lucky too i have a lot of weights right now at home I've been doing a lot of like uh, Olympic lifting, like uh, with the barbell, like hang, hang clean, nice. uh, snatch and stuff like that, that really like you have to use your back, your traps and it opens you up. And, and I'm working too on, on like the front rack mobility. So it's like, it, I'm all releasing like the forearms a lot. So like I'm starting to get, it's, I feel like better. So I feel like when I'm going to get back to training, cause I'm not training yet, yeah. um, like jujitsu at, at the very least. I'm going to be able to maybe not have like my fucking hands like this all the time and, and that's have that good. pain that, that gets in the forearm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's also good, good to stretch like those muscles that you're overworking. It also like passively stretches them out. Right. So you're opening up your, if you're doing things that open up your hand, you're stretching the, the forearm. So that's, it's pretty yeah. sick. I feel like uh, the front rack really helps for that. Like, and, and all the mobility uh, associated with, do you do like any, any mobility work? Besides like um, that, that, uh, strength training. I do. I'm actually, so it's pretty funny. Cause like, if you see me like stretch, like you would be shocked that I'm like half decent at jujitsu because like, I can't even touch my toes. Like I can't, I can't invert at all. I, I promise you will never see me invert ever. And like, if anyone like, I, I swear to God, I swear to God, I cannot invert. Sure. And if anyone wants to pass my guard, like slap, I shouldn't be saying this, but slap an over under or a double under on me because no. like it's game over because the second you start lifting my hips up, like it just, I'll give side control because to me, I'll tap, like I'll tap to like a double oh, under. Oh, wow. done. Like, Noted. Everybody. I, know, I, I feel like I shouldn't have said that on the podcast. I'm <laughs> so happy right now. Now no, you but don't I mean, have the choice but to work on that mobility though. Exactly. I was about to say, now you're accountable of what you just said. So you I know. To- so I actually do do stuff. I do like yoga for BJJ and whatnot, nice. but I, I need to be more consistent. So, um, Yoga for BJJ actually like is such a good tool, but they've been releasing. Uh, I don't know if you saw on YouTube, they've been releasing videos really often now that they last like forty eight hours. So it's a new video every couple of days. Ah, that's so, cool. so yeah, if you go on their YouTube channel, let's not subscribe. You can you can still like 
have like videos for uh, for yoga flows or stuff like that for BJJ. Sick. I also but found. I'm just... so go I ahead. Just, I was just gonna say quickly. I even sent it to Val, but I found so a bunch of people who I'm friends with who train jujitsu in Toronto. They were all like during the times when the gyms were open. They kept on tagging this like personal trainer, and he was doing these like really cool like jujitsu like tailored workouts. And I checked out his account, and he actually has like 400,000 followers, and he posts oh, like shit. all this stuff about like. Most of his stuff is actually not like weightlifting, but just like body mobility and like and and fixing like injuries and stuff through like weight training and through like mobility exercises. Um, I think it's like Lu L U strength and mobility or something. If anyone wants to check it out, I, I'm actually I've never spoken to this guy in my life, but I've just been using that for the past two weeks and it's been really helpful. So I'm gonna check it out for sure. That's that's yeah. interesting actually. So well, I'll probably ask Val to send it to me after. Uh, uh, I can send it to you. Already on it, message probably. about that yoga for BJJ I will. thing when they one. So uh, there you have it. That's how you stay we'll healthy. For- that's how you stay in shape. Yeah. What about what about jujitsu watch tape? Uh, uh, watching tape. Um. Yeah. So I actually signed up to uh, to Keenan online. Okay. Um. Because I just figured. I know there was like a lot. I, this is like stupid, but there was a lot of like free stuff going on, which I did download. Um. I actually sent an email to Grapple Arts for your leg lock DVD. Hey, um, hey. but then i figured too i was like man if i'm paying for this like for sure i'm gonna be like so pissed at myself if i don't watch it you know so i was like i'm paying like it's not too bad honestly i think it was like 20 us a month so it comes out to like 26 canadian okay. i was like now i'm like and just knowing that i'm paying for it i'm like oh fuck i feel like really stupid if i don't watch at least a few videos a day and it's been good and that's actually been perfect because my dad since he's like a bit older and like i said like it's not like the way he rolls is not exactly like what i'm gonna face in competition but just to do like specific training and stuff is like is better so like each week i've kind of just chosen something to like focus on um so like last week i did attacking and defending the turtle and then i just watched a bunch of videos on that and then tried to like apply those techniques which i find is like super efficient and i can't talk highly enough about specific training it's really yeah Yeah. i I absolutely agree yeah specific i think that's i credit like like that's the way i got better at most most things you know just like getting in the position and you have to work it out and figure it out with other people p.o you remember yeah. when we uh, remember when we used to do these speed drills as blue belts? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I did a full hour with Luca today, just speed drills, bro. We were dripping sweat, just speed drills. That's so cool. Like, and then we started. We used to start an outside ashi, right? And then just yeah. go. We did that oh, for yeah, like, right yesterday. We did that for like an hour. And honestly, dude, by the end, Luca was giving me a tough time. Luca's a tough kid, man. And yeah. you know what? It's like one of the things you, uh, Brianna, you were you were talking about situational and like a lot of people have came to me before and Taz, I'm sure, and like most people, like they're like, how do you learn leg lock? And it's not only by like drilling it, obviously, like any moves, right? It's like put yourself in that situation, say like go yeah. and you go. That's because you're gonna have a live like like someone putting a live reaction on your leg lock so you have to figure it out same thing with turtle with the back with mm. like arm bars anything right but i think it comes almost from like a laziness to be honest like if you're like if you're honest with yourself because like you kind of like learn a new technique i was actually just talking about this with a friend the other day i was like you learn a new technique and like it's kind of like convenient to be like okay well i'm just gonna roll and if i happen to get in that position like i'll use i'll put myself out of my comfort zone if i get into that position and use that technique and then otherwise i'm just gonna keep doing the same things that like i'm comfortable with and i'm like good with doing so it's kind of like it's i just find it like in the end and and i'm guilty of this laziness too but like if i really want to work it then i should just put myself there it's not that complicated it's not like oh i'm just gonna hope i get there well there's a very easy way to make sure you get there and that's just to put yourself there repeatedly yeah okay. so don't you true. find that uh, you can kind of identify competitors when you roll uh if you roll uh, uh, repeatedly with the same person and you see yeah. that they're trying to put themselves into your best game yeah for sure <laughs> well I, I actually like at one point too like it's it's like if you know you can beat a person like a, in the exact same way every time well then maybe at one point stop beating them that way because like you're not like it might as well like make more from the role and put yourself in a different exchange with them and see where that takes you, you know, as opposed what, to just they might like, be better too. Yeah. They might be better in another exchange than, than just beating them at their game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Val, you went to unity and did some kind of similar training, right? Uh, all sorts of in training. The, yeah. 
Yeah, well, they they pair you up with like one guy, and then you would choose. Yeah, that was a very fun actually exercise. So uh, how it went down? So you, you for the whole competition class, you're being paired with the same person if it's a good match. So Morilla was uh, running the class and he was walking around and he was adjusting if uh, he saw that there's a huge gap uh, between two guys or like a one uh, game doesn't uh, necessarily benefit the other's uh, uh, um, the other person's game. So you, you pair it down, so you, you alternate between drilling and uh, live sparring, positional sparring. So basically, you have an incentive to drill the counters to the position where you got the, uh, had the most troubles. Okay. In. And you go through these uh, cycles repeatedly and repeatedly, repeatedly. So, how many times and how often are you switching between drilling and rolling? So I think it's five minute rounds, and it, 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 for me, it lasted forever. <laughs> the round lasted forever, right? Yeah, the the uh, yeah the, the the whole class, yeah. Okay, so you do like five minutes on top or bottom, and then you yeah. switch. So you, after five minutes, yeah. Okay, that's pretty sick. I'm gonna try that with so Luca. My like, example: I was paired uh, with a guy with excellent uh, lasso, color sleeve, uh, long uh, 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 legs, lanky guy. And uh, uh, it was terrible but on one level, but on the other, uh, first, like uh, first few rounds, uh, it proved me that all the things I knew about passing lasso w were not exactly functional on, uh, at his level. And uh, <laughs> Good it gave realization. me an incentive to try uh, other things that I was like kind of new, but uh, I never tried because uh, other stuff worked uh, for me on, uh, on the people uh, on the people I worked uh, rolled with. Nice, so it was nice. That, then I gave uh, like obviously Morillo is walking around and he's giving him advice too. That's sick, man. When the trainer is actually not jumping in with the competitors and keeping an eye out, you can see his dedication to the team, man. That's that's yeah, pretty, yeah. that's pretty sick. I like the idea of doing that because I find sometimes like you roll with people too and you like. You get into, I don't know if you guys ever find this, but you get into like ruts almost. Like, like I have like the people that I train with the most at BTT and like some of them I realize I'm like, man, for the past like two weeks of rolling, we roll together every day. I just feel like the rolls like follows the exact same like storyline, you know, but in a way that's like, and it's not like in a super like way where I feel like either of our jujitsus are like kind of improving, you know, so it's like kind of nice sometimes to change it with these different activities where it's like, okay, like you put yourself in a position, now you're doing drilling, now you're doing, it kind of changes up that routine and like. I think maybe sometimes it's inevitable to kind of end up in a rut with someone when you're training with them like all the time. I don't know if I'm the only one yeah. to. I, I agree with you because here's the thing is like uh, me and Taza could talk about that because we, we know each other's game so much. So yeah. If we let's say we don't have seen each other for like a month or two and then we roll the first round is always more like competitive in that sense because we we don't know really what to expect from yeah. the other maybe as like some new weapons but then we roll a couple of time and then uh let's say he knows a weak weakness like sometimes he, he would like pass in the same fashion every time then becomes like the same fucking like roll all over again same thing again, with uh, yeah, ethan yeah. i have in mind yeah i roll like first roll with him is like crazy scramble like because we don't know what to expect and then it just becomes like that that storyline like you're saying like yeah. it just unfolds in the same manner almost so with those guys, I feel like you got to put yourself in those situations. Like, like say, okay, let's let's do back escape or something like that. Yeah, it's just weird because like then you get into a tournament and like you you never know what the what 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 like path it's gonna follow. So like I just think it's important to like keep that like that level because it's like sometimes it's weird to have roles with people and like the strategy I take is solely based on the fact that like we always go through the same pattern. So like I'm I'm like hyper strategizing to beat them in this pattern, but I'm like whenever I face someone in a tournament, I haven't spent like the past like year building up this like rolling pattern so it's like you have to make sure that you like as a competitor at least i think still but incorporate on the like, other side okay. if you think about it uh, you kind of if you struggle with one the same person you struggle with the same positions and same uh pathways it means that they're probably very good at this like yeah. a certain position and you're getting repetitions in uh, over and over uh, working against it right so that's the other approach, too. except for like uh, obviously positional sparring, where you're forced to start in a different position, is good. But also like yeah. just having uh, a good selection of partners too, which is like yeah. uh, I like that uh, we have this uh, 
open thing going on, uh, not only in my gym, but in, uh, across Montreal as well. And we can go and cross train with people. So you get this exposure to, to different games. That's so, fair. Slick, 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 slick. Yeah, there's enough variety here in Montreal, man, to get yourself very good training, man. Um, right now, not really, but... You know, when the, before the virus, you know what I mean? I have three training partners, uh, my wife yeah. and two of my kids. Dude, your wife and kids better be savages by the end of this quarantine. You should be beating them up. I think they should sure you. You'd be like, kids, I'm putting on the timer. If I can sub you X amount of times, you're doing the dishes, taking out the garbage, cleaning the bathroom, doing our, my bed, everything. The other day we did an exercise. They were passing my car uh, all together. Uh, I had a very like <laughs> I, no, it, it, it gets very very hard now because Dude, uh, for sure. yeah, yeah. Now the my kids even are at the point where they can kind of have some understanding of jujitsu and passing and control. So that's sick. You know what helps too? I find that really helped me is I'm literally filming everything that I'm doing right now. Like every round with with uh, with Lucas, every position, every drill, everything is filmed. So when we go over it, it's like he can see. And then, like, third session today, I'm telling you, there's a significant difference between the first role we had and the last one we had just now. So... What happened? Well, he subbed me, like, four times. That's what <laughs> happened. Uh, you actually you should probably clarify your training situation because, uh, like, we are kind of aware of what's going on, but... Uh, oh, the yeah, we did, uh, did a bet. We did a options. bet. We were doing EBI overtime, but I'm I'm working defense. So he's starting in he's starting in an offensive position, and I gotta escape and counter and submit him. So four out of these fifteen times, he he got me pretty good. Yeah, but generally I, just I, to say that I you moved in. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, what Val is trying to to ask you, Taza, is like uh, because your your training situation changed. Like last week, you were not oh, training. Okay. Now you're training. So what happened? Oh, People what happened wondering. is I was like. Listen, I don't want to be training, seeing even if it's one person, if it's not the same household, you know, it's just for my, for my own, for myself, you know, I don't want to be doing that to my, to my family. I was staying with my parents, mom, dad, and sister. And then one of my teammates here from TriStar, um, Luca, he's got an extra room in his apartment in the plateau. So I kind of had already two mats, Val hooked me up and then I kind of ran around Montreal and collected mats and then we put them here. We cleaned the apartment inside out, my friend my garbage we took out wild and so now this place is thick and span man taking we're, we're exchanging beatings on the daily we're getting two sessions a day and uh That's so true. far because it's new i'm i'm buzzing i'm like super pumped and happy but i don't know maybe i, be, I get used to it but for me my main my main objective is to not make it boring by making him better if he gets better and keeps subbing me like he just did today dude i we actually had a proper like I was like exhausted after. Well, you'll see. I'll probably do like narrated sparring, post it. You guys will see scraps yeah. running into the wall and that having to reset. <laughs> it was pretty sick. <laughs> That's nice though. Luca, Luca is like, uh, he's, he's still new to, to like jujitsu, but he's getting really good. And I feel like this with you, he's going to, he's going to come out like from, from quarantine, like a, a fucking savage. Dude, I've had to heel slip today. Heel slip, for the listeners that don't know, is when you're about to get heel hooked. And like by just at the very end, your heel slips to the inside. You point your knee in that direction and you get out by the by the skin of your teeth. And I had to do that a couple of times. So exciting times, man. I don't know. I hope this guy becomes a savage. We're trying to, we're trying to move him to the 88 kilos trials right in time. Boom. Oh, yeah. I'm so I'm weird. Just guys, I really hope they keep going. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I was just, you just mentioned trials. I'm like, for me, like, because the worlds aren't going to happen. And at this point, too, they're not going to host the worlds in like, I, well, at least I don't think so. The IBJF wouldn't make a worlds at like in like the month of like October and then do another one in June. It would be super weird. So I think I it just scrapped so, yeah. for this year. So like, yeah. I just want to focus into ADCC. And I'm just like, yeah. really hope this trial is still, uh, still yeah. happening. Like, you, you mentioned your mom's having a hard time with work, right? Yeah. You know how you can make it easier? Make laundry easier. Do no gi. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's been a long time since my mom has washed my laundry. But <laughs> oh, there you go. So it's already easier. But, Don't give um, up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I won't I, I'm always in minority. <laughs> yeah, always. Oh, well, so anyway, I'm with you. I'm still going to do the gi here. But uh, I'm just saying that my focus... Uh, 
So, uh, so to our credit, actually, uh, to mine and Brandon's credit, uh, we are the only here who consistently train in both. Yeah, yeah that's, of course. Yeah, uh, both. Rare, rare breed. Yeah. <laughs> so rare well, breed, okay. my friend. They always talk about that, like, can you do both these days? And I, I do have to say the one thing, like, so since I thought I was going to be doing, like, the pans, the Brazil, and then the Worlds, I was just so hyper gi focused versus in the fall, I was super no gi focused. But anyway, so I've just been like, and all the, 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 the stuff I've been studying in the quarantine has been in the gi, uh, just because I was just kind of still riding that wave. And then at one point I was like, okay, well, if I'm not doing the world, I'm doing ADCC. So I have to switch, but it's actually so hard to switch because you're like, I just feel like I've, I've invested so much like time and energy, which I know is not, it's not like worthless in no gi. It's still like some of it still transfers. But it's just super hard to like ha see all this progress in the gi and then go back to nogi where like now I'm a bit awkward in nogi. As it, where in the fall, since I was doing more nogi, I felt like I was in this like really nice flow. I was like when I would roll in the gi, I'd actually feel awkward. I'd be like, oh, what, what's going on with like all these lapels? And now I actually feel like the inverse. So it's like super hard to kind of like make that switch in the <laughs> moment in the season where you have to switch over. I don't think it's like impossible, but it is it is a difficulty for sure. So, so, so usually... what's your I Oh, sorry. yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, Let's say you're preparing for a good tournament. Uh, do you still train in no gi uh, throughout the week, just not giving it enough focus, or how do the uh, usually structure? Um, it? Yeah, I'll still like like for like the month leading up to the tournament, I'll still uh, train like no gi or gi vice versa. But I definitely try to like do more the majority in the one for the tournament I'm doing, and then like the week of the tournament, usually like like my professor Cascal is like pretty good. Like he'll. If if I have a tournament in the gi, like he'll even like offer to bring his gi and like do rolls with me in the gi. Or if it's no gi, he'll like take off his gi top, roll with me no gi. And there's like, and then usually I have like a few volunteers in every class to like do the rolls with me in in the like medium that I need. But I don't like I like doing both throughout. But definitely like closer to I'll I'll just like make sure the majority is in the one that I'm competing in. And then the week of like, it just makes me anxious. I'm like, oh, I don't want I don't want to train no gi if I'm doing a gi tournament, and I don't want to also the uh, vice versa too yeah so for you the, for you the matter is is um because the the rule set's pretty much the same right between no gi and gi and ibjjf right so it's, yeah it, what's what's changing mostly is it the attacks you're doing is it the grips you're making what's what is it that you are changing between the gi and the no gi um well my biggest difference i would have to say is that in the gi like I'm, I'm always going to look to pull guard and I'll come up top on the, on, if there's a double guard pull, I'll come on top. I don't mind, but like, I'm feeling like good in guard versus Nogi. Like, to be honest, like, especially like IBJF, I just like have like, just in this past year, I've had no interest in playing bottom because I just find it's like, you can pull guard and then, you know, they're just like, you have nothing to connect them to you. And then you try to sweep, 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 and they can like scramble out a lot of things. Like you go out of bounds, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And then it just seems versus like, it just seems on top. You have like such an advantage because and it's not like they can attack leg locks either. So it's like, I'm not worried about that. So it just feels like they're more limited from the bottom. If like from that transfer to Gi to no Gi, that their bottom game becomes more limited than their top game does. So like in that sense, mm -hmm. I've just like preferred playing on top. Like I, I won't pull guard and no Gi anymore, but um, I don't know if that, that would change for ADCC rules. Like, cause I know you're allowed to pull guard at, at the beginning. I don't know if I would want to pull guard, but I think I would, I would say the same thing would apply. I would just try to stay on top, but then I do have to sharpen up my, uh, my leg lock <laughs> situation. <laughs> I, I asked because like, even for, for myself, like if I'm, if I'm preparing for IBJJF or submission only, the preparation changes, right? Um, yeah. like if I'm, if I'm about to pass, you know, I cleared the knee line from top and I'm about to pass and the guy turns into me. If no heel hooks are loud, it changes things because I can't fall back on a heel or at least threaten it or show that, oh, there's a heel hook if you keep turning into me, whereas yeah. in points. So, yeah, it's, it's mainly adjusting, like you said, like you, you, you prefer sweeping in, in the gi, right? Yeah. Because you have, these, you have these lapels, these grips that you can hold on to and pull, uh, whereas in no gi, you prefer to, you know, pass from, from yeah, top. Yeah, I just feel like they have so many less options to attack from the bottom as well, especially when you don't consider leg locks, so... But I did do yeah. a, a submission only thing um, with leg locks in October, and actually, mm -hmm. like it was, I had so much fun like trying like a different rule set, um, mm -hmm. especially no key. Um, I didn't attack any leg locks or anything, but just like it was, it was cool to like be able to play with like knowing that that was an option that they could attack that and like yeah. modifying the game accordingly. And especially and since you, it was something that I wasn't super familiar with, I definitely like 
was more cautious. I'm like, okay, well, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to charge into an unfamiliar situation because in the end they'll be better. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just walking into this playing field. Right. So I'm going to assume that they're better in every aspect of leg locking than I am. So I was like, I have to shut it down from the start and just 100%. playing with that. Kind of See, that awareness is good because you realize that you, what you're realizing is that they have spent more time in a specific position. If they put me in that, they probably know yeah. more than me in that. And I'm likely to lose that battle. So you yeah, try exactly. to get in familiar areas which is great adjustment to make when you're competing, right? In competition for competitors out there, that's super important. Not only for the rule set, but for body types, right? If you're preparing yeah. for an opponent that's, I don't know, stocky, small, short, maybe try to like expose his back. Depending on the body types, you want to do different things, right? If somebody's yeah. lanky, you probably want to do something else than if somebody's a little stocky. So uh, yeah, interesting. Would you, would you, how did it go? Like the competition, I think you did pretty well from what I remember. Yeah, I won a thousand bucks, which was pretty cool. <laughs> and then it's I, always good. Yeah. Always and good. That was the that that was bucks, like, right? I'm doing no gi submission only from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it pays well, the bills. Collect, exactly. you can collect those coffee mugs. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's funny. I did that tournament because I did the no gi pants, and like that was that. Well, I did the Vegas Open, and I did the no gi pants, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm like low on money." And then I saw this thing, and they were giving a thousand dollar prize. I'm like. And I had a bit of like debt on my credit card and I was like, yo, I got to pay this off. And I went and it was like funny because I was like, I'm going to go to this tournament and if I lose, I'm going to be in worse debt. And if I win, then I paid off and I get a little bit of extra money. So it was like, I got to win. Like I was like, I went to that tournament, like, I don't care. Like I'm, I'm winning this tournament. Like there's, there's nothing else is happening here. That's, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Yep. No, yep. rude boy. Yeah. It's the best way to put a bit of pressure on yourself. So you have to win that money no matter what. Hey guys, hey, yeah. This is how you win tournaments. You put yourself in credit card debt and then you sign up after <laughs> this is this is financial advice by yeah. the way to everybody you should give only medical follow. advice <laughs> brianna yeah. brianna i i did that for adcc i didn't win unfortunately but yeah it's, it's it was still worth it <laughs> you get dude i mean do, as an athlete though you were you invited or weren't yes. you invited for the adcc so don't uh, they the pay second, everything? the second one yes the one in 2019 the first one i, I had to win i had to win my fourth attempt so uh yeah barely making it into adcc holy shit so adcc man if anything's worth it like just <laughs> oh, yeah. just being an adcc vet is like it's, it's okay like, we'll, we'll we'll have better performances in, yeah. in the future without a doubt without a doubt so uh you, you were talking about the trials too so do you have like uh like you know the switch to nogi is kind of hard like you were saying but do you have like a, a plan in mind a bit to prepare for trials or you have like did you did you like prepare something for it? Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing um, when we get back. Um, I was already like I was I've been wrestling for like a little while, but it's like very like patchy. Like I'll I'll, I'll do like a month where I do it like you know once twice a week, and then I go for like a couple months where I don't do it. Then I do a month on again. So I'm definitely gonna be more strict with myself with that and be wrestling at least uh, twice a week. And mm -hmm. then, uh, and then cardio, a lot of cardio for sure. Um, I've just been like, re I really liked, I did this like hill workout and, um, my dad like showed it to me and it was actually just wild. We did so many things. I was like, cause honestly running up and down a hill kind of sucks, but we did things oh, yeah. like with a partner where you were like, you were going up the hill, but you were like pummeling against someone who was like pushing back against you. So even though it's actually harder, it makes it more uh, fun because you're like working uh, against uh, someone. And we did stuff like backwards bear crawls up the mountain. So I'm just going to do like a lot yeah. of that kind of stuff too because i know you're that's so brutal you know what you should try Brianna. yeah when you're doing the hill when you you run you're running straight you're running uphill right you're running straight yeah. when you go back do you run straight backwards or you go backwards um i i usually walk down as as a reward to myself <laughs> <laughs> fair play but now if you want to pull about get that in a, <laughs> get in a, get in a wrestling stance and then yeah. walk backwards rock backwards yeah. Your that hammies, like hell. Your are gonna love you the next day. Amazing, camera try to try that out. Try that out. A little extra, if you want, have your dad on your back too. It could be, it could yeah, be extra. Perfect. <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah, these workouts are good. Hill sprints in general. Um, yeah, or stairs. Like I was, I was going yesterday to the uh, oratory, uh, oh, Saint Joseph. Yeah. Right there's oh, stairs. Oh wow, there. that's good stairs. That's, that's really brutal. Yeah, if you, if you want to do a couple of sprints there, oh, you sprinted those. Yeah. That's Did wild. you start from all the way down, all the way up? Not at the like all the way down from the from the the stairs, Street. but yeah, from the stairs, but not from the. You know, there's a little hill before you get to the stairs. Yeah, 
I didn't include that. Fuck that. <laughs> Remember, that's still some rocky shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the I stairs are still pretty brutal, yeah. Ooh, the stairs, they so don't many end. People, it's, so and it's like you're turning, too, at the same time, so you don't yeah. see where it's going to end. You're like, when is this going to end? Just, and you're sprinting no, up the stairs. The trick stair. is you can't look. You can't like be like looking as you run up. Like I never run up the hill and say, like, okay, like 20%, 40%, because then I'd, like, I just get discouraged. I kind of just stare into the oblivion and, and keep going until all of a sudden I'm on flat ground. <laughs> As the stairs are brutal. You gotta, you gotta uh, put yourself in uh, hypnosis or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you do any other sports growing up? Um. Yeah, I used to play rugby. Actually. Okay. Didn't they make you do things like that for rugby? Yeah. So okay. So something that I missed so much about rugby was that like we used to do like really intense conditioning, but it was like part of practice, and you could not show up. Like you had to do this, and you were running with your team, so like. Like, you would be, like, running to be at the front of the line. Like, you'd be pushing yourself so much. And I, like, miss so much these, like, team conditioning trainings. And actually, one of the things I want to do is, like, start, like, actually, my plan is to start just, like, this big, like, jujitsu conditioning thing at the Centennial Hills. And just, like, Sick. anyone from any school can come. And, Sick. like, and they literally, it'll just hold me accountable. Like, I'm not, like, going to charge anyone or whatever. And I'm just going to run, like, a, a, like, conditioning class. And then just them showing up is going to force me to do it is, like, kind of, like, what my plan is here. But, like, I miss wow. that team atmosphere of, like, everyone's, like, pushing each other. Everyone's, like, suffering together. Like, that was, like, that was the tip. That's that the was best. the best thing ever. Same thing. I was having these these uh, flashbacks, like, doing all these sprint workouts outside of, like, soccer training. And, like, yeah. you know, before the season starts, it's mostly before the season starts they make you do these. Because during the season, you often had to travel for games and whatnot. Right. So, so preseason... That it doesn't exist in jiu-jitsu, but it exists in every sport. Like even I like, know, it's uh, crazy. in judo, wrestling, uh, everybody yeah. does this. Uh, but jujitsu yeah. really kind of. Uh. I think Let's it's like actually could like really help you grow because like it's like you take so it's an individual sports, but then you you literally have the opportunity to take the best aspects of team training and apply them to this individual sport. And I, I think that that would like really like help a team excel. Listen, and it, it, it forces you to push yourself too. Like yeah. when you have teammates around, you know. It's the same thing I was like uh, telling uh, when I went to Europe. I was, I was uh, traveling to the Euros from uh, Dublin, and and uh, I was training at the Dara O'Connell gym, and they all travel as a team, like twenty guys all together, and and they always travel to competition as a team, and it looked like a like a like a football team basically, or a soccer team, or whatever. I love that. Like, all together, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah, and they probably do conditioning all together. It's. I wish we could do that. Actually, we can. I think we, we can. Do this, uh, on the Montreal level. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's slowly staying. Team, it's know? not per club because uh, I think the competitor uh, numbers are not that great in each individual school. But yeah. if you take yeah. like a slice of Montreal, people who compete, it, it, it kind of happens, right? We're going yeah, I mean, together in the... I mean, listen, it doesn't, we like, even non-competitors can come. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Like, you can encourage everybody to do it. It's a sick workout. You do For your sure. best. And then whatever, you can show up. Hey, listen, you promote it. I'll, I'll be more than happy to, to help promote it. Get some get some eyes awesome. to, to your thing. And people listening, pay close attention. Keep your eyes peeled. Brianna, yeah. follow her. What's your, what's your ID? Um, it's Brianna SM for St. Yeah. Marie. Keep your eyes peeled. She will let you guys know when this whole thing is over. Get and your the idea going. is you have to treat it like you you have to go. You know what I mean? You can't see it oh, yeah. like as like, oh, maybe I'll do that thing on, on Sunday. You know, it's like, no, no, I have that thing on Sunday that I have to go to. I think that's Sunday, what we have to do just, to make this work, you know? It's just part of your schedule at that moment. Yeah. When you when you like you agree to it, you have to do it. And I feel I like you said, like when you're a group or a team, makes you it makes you accountable. Because yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to say no to other people, right? You want to be all together as a team. Mm. Brianna, so you you mentioned. Um, well, I don't know. You mentioned you've been watching some tape. Do you ever watch any like female competitors? Do you like try to influence your game a bit based on like some female competitors you've seen in the past or something? Do you have anybody you watch in particular? Um, I would say more that I watch based off of like my style of game. Like, so I don't, like, so if I, like, so I know, especially because, like, again, like I said, I'm, I'm actually, like, not super mobile. So sometimes I see the way people play and I'm, like, uh, like I'll never be, like, doing some kind of crazy inverted guard or something. So, like, to me, I'm not going to, like, it's not in my interest to go watch that and, like, try to imitate that. 
So instead I'll try to take, like, if I see, like, I like a certain style of play, then I'll look at, like, how they, they use that certain kind of attack, you know? Like, I know, like, Fionn Davies has, like, really good pressure passing, so, like, I'll go... That, for me, I'm like, okay, I can pressure pass, you know? But I'm not super good at, like, the the flashy Toriandos and stuff, so then I'm not going to go look at, like, Leandro Lowe do that, but I just kind of take from, like, whatever I, I think, as opposed to just choosing one person and saying, like, okay, I'm going to try and do everything this guy does, because, then we're not the same person, so I might not be able to do everything that this guy or girl does. It's kind of how I... I take mm-hmm. it. And okay. any, athletes, any athletes you you uh, you have in mind that pop up like off the top of your head that you you watch uh, the most? Um, right now, well, like I said, I signed up for Keenan online. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing a lot of his videos, and then I've been doing uh, I like um, Marcelo Garcia because I find it's just like it's again I love like I love fighters that like I watch and I'm like even with my like my stiff weird body I feel like I watch their jiu-jitsu I'm like I could do that you know like I'm not like I'm like he's doing it way better than I'm doing but it's not something that like I'm there like oh my god I, I can never envision myself doing this and like props to the people who can I'm just like I'm not someone who's like crazy coordinated naturally and stuff like that so I like when I see someone's jiu-jitsu I'm like man he's just like doing like these simple things like really well and it's like really effective like Mateus Denise obviously is like his student but like I was actually just watching a couple of his ADCC matches um today and it's like the same thing he's not like i'm watching things he's doing it's something like that crazy where i'm watching it looks super like like i watch gary i'm like i don't know if i could roll like gary but then <laughs> I, I think he's amazing but i don't know if i could roll like that but then i watch my ts i'm like maybe maybe i could roll like that you know <laughs> i don't know that, yeah gary there are a lot of granby rolls in his in his game so yeah. uh, a lot of granby a lot of inversions um a lot of rolls like makikomi rolls things like that connie's yeah these uh yeah pretty I actually you bring up Gary. Me, I try to t- I base my game off of Gary's game as much yeah. as possible. But uh, you're the, super active too. Like you have that style. Like you're like you're amazing in scrambles and stuff like that. So like th- that's perfect for you then. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Especially that he could, like I'm trying to like I'm trying to win the things he's won. You know, like try to follow the, that same that same yeah. battle. So it only makes sense for me to like watch his game and try to. No, Try to make sure. it, but it does as much yeah, as possible. I, I, I think you hit a good point too. Like once you start like at a certain level, you start knowing yourself more and the way you, you actually can do or not do some stuff or in the different way at, at the very least, like you can really start seeing, okay, that person, I can like get something off of them. Like, and some other people is just like, all right, this is, this is not my game. You yeah. Know? And it's not to say that it's bad stuff. It's just not no. like maybe tailored for me and my abilities. I think, I think the, Lucas Lepri, Brianna. Um, yeah, so I, I did it. He also offered like a free week on his like online course, and nice. uh, he had some he had some super nice stuff. It was just um, I don't want to not to talk like his technique was amazing, but the website was like all the videos were on the same page, and I just got kind of overwhelmed because I was like, and you could like kind of like search keywords, but it's the type of thing. It's kind of like flow how their search engine is like not the best, and if you type in the wrong words or, or it's like not spelled perfectly or something and then you just can't find the technique you're looking for so i just like but like the technique i did watch was amazing i just found like the website was like overwhelming so i was like okay i can't do it i think you yeah sorry about that yeah from from all the online services i tried as well like keenan does the best job in uh like being boring and uh thoughtful and organizing online content because it's uh, which i appreciate honestly like it's it's he's like my favorite like I, i like him as a fighter uh, but it's not like I'm like, oh, he's the best one ever. I think he's super good. But just like his website is so well done. Like it's it's just like it's really easy to learn from. Nice, At the end nice. of the day, you're paying for service. So it's like it's yeah. important that it reflects like 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 something of quality, especially if you're paying like around 20, 20 bucks US, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that, makes, that makes perfect sense. You watch, obviously, um, I, I just asked Lucas because, you know, you, you like to feed the lapel a lot and, you know, coming yeah. up and forcing these singles. I think he's pretty good at it, mixing it with like overhead bumps, coming up with singles. Oh, he's amazing! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a good guy to watch too. He's not I would too heavy. I'd love to go to his school one day. Like, actually, my coach and him are pretty close, and he's offered to him to come do like camps before like the major tournaments. So nice. I've been. Um, if my coach ever goes, I might go one day with him. And, yeah, I think, I think that's a good be, opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Good opportunity for sure. Yeah. Um, I think he's. I'm not sure. I think he's in. North Carolina, Virginia, somewhere in that North area. North Carolina. I think he, there's some good jiu-jitsu in that area, you know. There's yeah. like some pretty decent jiu-jitsu that's not being talked about, like Lucas. There's Ryan Hall. There's uh, Seth Smith. Um, I can't. I've actually it. been watching a bit of Ryan Hall too. Uh, I watched a few of his videos. He actually has some good conceptual stuff too. 
Backside <laughs> 50. Pardon me? Backside 50 50. Yeah, like if stuff just like and just like general concepts of like 50 50, because to be honest, it's been like a really weak position for me. So it was like nice to to check it out. And yeah. he just like he talks about a lot of stuff in general. I'm like, telling you, there's are... there's a wave of new leg locks coming. I'm telling you. There's brace yourselves, like there's there's like these this angle of backside 50 50, these yeah. inversions that haven't like it's They're extremely shame. dangerous. All these, comps, all these comps that I was preparing for, I was planning on hitting these moves because it's just yeah. So like, and like, keep your, like, if you study these right now, you'll give yourself a big head start when uh, this virus thing passes, the virus thing is going to pass. We're going to yeah. be back to the mats when they were going to be training, get your head start. Rude boy. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's definitely a, a, an edge. And listen, you're, you're saying you, you like, you struggle a bit from 50, 50. So if you, if you start getting this, especially for like, like ADCC coming up, that's, that's, that's a smart move. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm I'm gonna start uh, diving deep into the nogi world. Taking so. notes. Sorry, Take Val. Notes. <laughs> Get to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, always uh, nice right. you fools. Yeah, yeah, it's always funny. I mean, we've been going on for almost an hour now, or like around an hour. Um, I don't know if uh, Rihanna, if you want to like maybe plug something like before we uh, we let you go. Uh, you said your Instagram earlier. We'll put it on like the description and everything, so people can like shoot you a message or something. But what is it again? It's uh, Brianna, so B R I A N N A, and then S M. Yeah, keep All your right. eyes peeled. Those workouts outside are happening. Yes, She's gonna they, they're one hundred percent happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I can't take it back. And, yeah, and you could, you should, you should film your workouts. Like people are getting interested in that kind of stuff, you know, because because there's a lot of people that are wondering what what can they do. For sure, you have maybe a bit more gear than other people, but still, yeah. like they can, they can like take something away from it and and maybe get motivated, like to just go yeah. out and move, you know. Yeah, it can motivate people, you know, just just show them it's it's possible, it can be done. Because yeah. oftentimes it's not like people know how it's done. They just need to see somebody else do it, and then they be like, yeah. okay, let me do it. Actually, cool. if anyone wants to message me, I have, I actually just created a Google doc. Um, cause I found the best way to do my workouts and be consistent with them is actually just to, like to plan them. So every morning I have like my coffee and I write my workout for the day. So um, it's actually I do the same. Doc I can share with you guys if you want. It's like just literally every day it's like the, the weightlifting workout I do and then like the jujitsu drills or whatever. So if anyone wants to shoot me a message on Instagram, I'd be happy to share that document with you. Yeah, actually, I'm going to shoot you a message because I've been doing the same thing every morning. Like I do a bit of yoga, take a coffee, and then I plan the workout for the day. And I think it's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you, you won't fucking do it, right? So No, for sure. You write it down, and then it's like the workout. stone. Yeah. I got to get my things together. I haven't written one workout this whole quarantine. <laughs> I've been working out, but it still works, man. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like, to see, it, I'd like it. to see what it looks like. I definitely like yeah, to see what it looks like, like how you guys are organizing your stuff. Because I mean, if it can make it better, why not? You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Brianna, it was nice chatting with you again. Hopefully, the third time we have you on the podcast is going to be in an actual studio. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks you for having me on. Thanks, welcome. Um, need to figure out how to hang up. Brianna, have a good one. Be good. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Okay, Val, where's the hang up button? <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Brianna has just left the conversation to our dear listeners. It is time to move on to the support section. If you guys want to support the podcast, step number one, you click on the subscribe. We are available on YouTube and also all audio platforms. I'm not sure I've mentioned that. You click on the follow, you click on the subscribe, you click on that bell, rude boy. We let you know when the next episodes come out. Breakdowns and us chatting, talking about jujitsu, jujitsu and more jujitsu. To our sponsors, step number one, Mizu Studio. Val, my man, thank you for helping us and running this podcast, running a tight ship, running a tight gym that is spick and span, I'm sure, even now. Dust dust free, Mizu Studio, number one. Number two, we got Scramble. Guys, Scramble just released a couple of tees. If you want to look comfortable and you want to look cool, home on your couch, go check them out. All right. Scramble, they make cool gear, you know, quality stuff, lasts you long. Bad at life. Yeah, there you go. Bad at life. Good at jujitsu. That's, right. That's all you need. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. And what better time to be bad at life and good at jujitsu than now? <laughs> I think there are better times, actually. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they Next are. up, Betty. Betty B, we miss you in North Carolina. Roll forever. 
keep your eyes peeled. That's all I got to say. Follow, follow yeah. us on Instagram and keep your eyes peeled. All right. Yeah. Thanks Good for the do. support, the usual support. All the usual support. Thank you very much. Next up, we got Physio Mentum. If you guys have any injuries, I had, like I mentioned on the podcast, I had a impingement in my shoulder. A couple of minutes with Guy, a couple of texts, a couple of phone calls. And I did also personal research. You can research, hey, rotator cuff tear on YouTube. There's everything. Self-educate yourself and keep yourself injury-free during these times. Make sure you're strong and healthy when the time comes. Yeah, Next I time- recommend... Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I just recommend like Supple Leopard. If you guys like, you've heard about the book so many times, but it's the time to read it now and just add those mobility exercises. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. And not only like, it sounds like we're telling you to sit down and read a boring book. It's not that. Supple Leopard is not a boring book that you go from 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 beginning to end reading. It's It's got pictures. It's got, you know, it's organized in a way where you see which part of the body hurts and then you can go see these different mobilization exercises that you can do. So check Supple Leopard out. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, guys, next up, there's there's a very cool um, thing that I discovered not too long ago, the BJJ flowcharts, um, a way, a visual way to kind of organize your training. You know, you can print it out. If you got Matt's home, you know, you got your, your, your better half, your buddy, whatever the case may be, and you guys want to get some drills, um, you want to kind of see what you want to work that day and get it done in, in, in a very efficient way, then go check out BGJ flowcharts. You get 20% off when you enter the code Taza, my family name. If you don't know how to spell it, it's T-A-Z-A. Just, you know, if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's got charts of most of Danaher's DVD uh, and Gordon's DVD. So if you guys got them and you kind of feel overwhelmed by the amount of techniques, well, uh, that's a good way to kind of help you get your training in. Guys, am I forgetting yeah. something? Yeah. And lastly, we have the Patreon that's uh, still open. We started it. And uh, and yeah, you guys can uh, just go on and, and pledge if you want, but you don't have to. It's donation-based. If you're listening and you, you feel like helping us out to run the, the podcast, go ahead. Uh, otherwise, just subscribe. It's the most important thing to do. And if you like what you're, what you're hearing, you can send us messages, feedback. Uh, you can repost. Whatever you guys want, we will answer question if you send us our way. All right. So Absolutely. that's pretty much it, I think. Pretty much it, guys. I think it's a good place to wrap it up. Valerio, Pio, as always, yep. it's a pleasure catching up with you guys. And uh, we'll chat soon, I guess, in it. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Be good to our listeners. 